Hey guys, today we're going to look at the DeNova Magnum 12 Pro Audio slash Home Theater Woofer. I'm not really sure what you would classify it as. It's got a Pro Audio platform, but there's been a few tricks done to it, like a rollover surround and things like that, to give it more X-Max and put the bandwidth from about 40 hertz to 400 hertz. Now it can go deeper and it can go higher, but that's kind of the target bandwidth for this woofer. Ever since I saw the initial specs for this thing, I thought this thing is a mid-bass monster and a lot of people are targeting that frequency range. So check it out, maybe it would fit into your home theater. I'm just going to show you what these things look like in the packaging. These are built by Eminence and so the packaging is similar to what you find on other Eminence woofers. Everything's tight, packed well and secure. I didn't have any concerns that maybe something was damaged. The foam gasket does stick above the surround enough to be able to do that, which is handy. And you know what? A lot of people don't like these foam gaskets, including myself, but on most of these types of drivers, I'm able to take them off and build a trim ring or rear mount them or something like that. So there are workarounds for that. I have these cabs from another project. There's a Celestian FTR12-37AC, I believe it's called, in here, and uh, I'm just gonna repurpose these cabs for the for the test. I didn't measure TS parameters because I already have these boxes built. They're ported, and to be frank, rebuilding boxes that are sealed to get my TS parameters is a ton of work and so I plan to do this in a future video. I would like to do kind of a part two of this uh, woofer using a bigger box and measure the TS parameters and look at this thing more in terms of its low frequency capability. Today I'm looking at a little bit of a higher end like how it would be used in the bottom of the three-way. So for now um, this is what we're working with. So I'm just gonna recycle. I don't mind using them for this purpose. Let me know if you want this bad boy tested. Pretty nice woofer. It's probably worth checking out if any of you have an interest. I'm not a big fan of these to be honest. Okay, and here they are mounted up in the box. They're not the prettiest gals in the speaker field of choices, but um, you know what? I think they look pretty rugged and the more I look at them and use them, uh, the more I'm impressed with their looks, and I have grills, but they're not necessary in my opinion. So this box I'm using is 14 and a half by 16 tall and about 11 and a half deep. This works out to about 30 liters. The ports are triangular; they're four and a half inches deep, two and a half inches or six and a half centimeters uh, wide on each side. I'm just going to feed it a 10 hertz signal to give it some break in. At this point, I set up the Woofer Tester 3 and took an impedance measurement of what I do have in this box. In this box, I get a 47 or 48 hertz tuning, which is pretty respectable for the type of woofer it is and how small the enclosure is as well. Uh, so this is a reasonable result. And we're, I'm also seeing good agreement between both woofers. If we zoom in here, you can see this is uh, at the tuning frequency, there's a little bit of difference. But in the um, upper bandwidth above tuning, you can see we get unbelievable good agreement. If you've watched any of my other testing videos, it's not, well, it's, so far it hasn't happened where we get this good of agreement. Also notice the impedance is quite high. So when we plug it into the box model with the box that I'm using, we can see here that the there's a gentle roll off down to the tuning frequency. That's because this uh, box is a little bit undersized. It could be bigger and tuned a little lower. Um, but for this, you know, especially if you're using this for high output system, this is an excellent option. Um, in the size of enclosure we have here, we get well controlled X Max. There's a thousand watts going into this. The output is insane. You know, with a 60 hertz high pass to your subs or something like that, or even 80 hertz, you, you just could never run out of excursion. These things could pound away all day. And um, so this is kind of the high power handling option, high output option. Now, if you weren't so concerned with high output and high power handling, 
and you had a little more space, you could go something, go to something like this. Uh, this here you can see is a 40 hertz tuning option and a um, 60 liter box. So we've doubled the box size, we've dropped the tuning, we get a little more extension, uh, a little smoother, flatter extension out to the port tuning. And with the 40 hertz tuning, we can very comfortably cross over to subs at 60 hertz without worrying about phase issues or whatever. You could even run these full range with music and uh, be, be very comfortable and feel like you're getting the entire experience. So that's another really nice option for these. Okay, now I needed to get the frequency response um, of the driver free air. So uh, if you watch my Modus review, um, I did this the same night, took it outside. We're about eight feet up and uh, the microphone is at one meter, or at least I'm trying to get it to eight feet up and one meter. And you can see the struggle I go through to uh, make things work outside. It's a bit of an operation, but what this allows me to do is get the reflection as far away from the driver as possible to replicate an anechoic chamber experience as best as possible. So believe me, um, this is necessary. I get a lot of questions and comments about, well, we listen to speakers in our room. Why do you measure like that? So there we are, there's the results. I did the same thing for both woofers, and again, you can see excellent agreement. I'm just so impressed. Um, these results you gotta ignore from about 120, 150 hertz down, just because of that first reflection and the gate time. Uh, but until about 1000 hertz, these things are bang on each other. Um, there is nothing you can complain about in terms of agreement between the results what the results are telling me I'm seeing breakup appears to be happening around 2000 Hertz so this woofer is really not something I would use above a thousand Hertz and the other issue I'm seeing here is around the you know six seven hundred Hertz range there's a bump there and um, I'm not sure how nice that'll play I should also mention that this is looking like a 91 dB sensitivity in the free field. Um, so that includes the baffle step losses. This is the worst case scenario we can have for sensitivity. And 91 dB all the way down to like 200 hertz. And we're talking about an 8 ohm woofer that actually has an impedance minimum of 8.6. Um, so this is a seriously efficient woofer for this frequency range. Uh, even though it may not seem like it. Um, this is a worst case scenario by far. So even though you can probably show me quite a few pro woofers that can hit 98 dB on their spec sheet, once you put them in the free field and you consider how deep their base extension is, um, this one is sticking its head out above the competition for sure. Guys, at this point in the video, I was just running out of daylight, so I didn't get to, didn't get to show you how I set up the ground plane measurements, but this is kind of how I did it with the Modus. It's no different, it was the same night even, so you can see what I did here, and here's the results. Okay, oh, man, again, excellent agreement, not only between each other, but also in the box model. <laughs> even though I didn't measure the TS parameters, uh, because I didn't have a closed box to, use, to do that with, I'm feeling very confident that these TS parameters are accurate, uh, they match the box model, the results I'm getting are excellent, um, you can see extension all the way down to 50 hertz. This makes an awesome bass driver in my opinion. It does still need subwoofer support, at least in this size of box, but for the intended purpose of this driver, this is exactly what we're looking for. This is perfect um, for blending with subs and giving your mains a little bit of extra kick. So I'm quite happy with this result. Now I go inside and I set up for a little bit of a closer measurement. Uh, because I'm going to take off-axis measurements. Um, I think this is an important set of data even for, an, uh, for a mid-base module because this driver could be used in the bottom of a three-way and because it's a large diameter driver uh, the off-axis response could become a significant part of your design criteria. So I'm just going to set things up here and start taking off-axis measurements. I use a protractor um, and some line markings to get all my uh, or angles. I do 15, 30, 45, and in this case I'm going to do 60 degrees off axis.
All right, and I'm all finished up. I got the results. Okay, so we get uh, you know a very consistent off-axis response all the way up to about a thousand hertz, and then we start seeing things go a little haywire. So again, this is um, this could be related to cone breakup, and as I mentioned. Uh, the breakup is most prominent and, and noticeable with the on-axis result around 2000 Hertz. Uh, but this kind of indicates to us that things are getting a little bit hairy. Even at 900 Hertz, you can see um, the off-axis response is kind of bunching together and doing some funny things. So really, um, ideally, I think you would cross this thing maybe even as low as 600 Hertz as, as a maximum crossover point. But I think you could get away with using it up to around eight or nine hundred hertz. It just isn't the same as you know some of the other pro woofers. Okay, I plopped it into XM to see how this thing could work in a three-way, and to be honest, it was a little bit challenging. That bump at six, around six hundred hertz just kept giving me troubles no matter what I did. Now this was just me spending five minutes on it to see how easy it was to work with. So I still think I can get results with this woofer. It's just gonna take a little more than the usual plug-in, uh, you know, your off-the-cuff filters and, and work with it. It's gonna take some, some manhandling here, I think. <laughs> And this woofer can be hard to find. If you've never heard of this woofer before, you gotta go in onto the DIY Sound Group website, go to replacement parts, and look for the Magnum 12. There you have it, guys. You can see why this thing is such a mid-bass monster, and it can perform really well um, in that application. And even in your pro audio rig, maybe a compact pro audio rig of some kind, or the bottom of a high fidelity three-way, there's no reason you couldn't use it there either. If you like what you've seen, I've got uh, more videos like this, testing drivers. I recently tested the Modus 8-inch woofer, which is an incredible 8-inch woofer. I'll put the testing review right here for you to click on. You can go see that now if you want. Also, please subscribe. You can click here to do that. And also, check me out on Instagram at impulse underscore audio. Thanks, guys. Bye.